And now we must analyze and interpret the story, The Lady in the Looking Glass, A Reflection, by a well-known English writer, Virginia Woolf. Uh, and uh, let us work out the strategy for understanding, analysis, and interpretation. Generate inferences insightfully from the text. Get engaged with the text and apply various strategies. Consider the biographical, historical, and cultural context. Situate Virginia Woolf's story within its appropriate cultural and historical context. Identify the narrator in the story. Identify the stream of thoughts in a character's mind. Identify how the author succeeds in showing the character's portraits. Focus on literary and language means. Uh, and, as usual, about the author, about Virginia Woolf. The English novelist, critic, and essayist Virginia Woolf was one of England's most distinguished writers of the middle part of the 20th century. She was the daughter of Sir Leslie Stephen, a famous scholar and philosopher. James Russell Lowell, the American poet, was her godfather. Virginia and her sister were educated at home in their father's library. She was quite young when she fell deep into the world of literature. Virginia married Leonard Woolf, a brilliant young writer and critic from Cambridge, England, whose interests in literature were well suited to hers. They founded the Hogarth Press. Over the years, they published many important books, including Prelude by Catherine Mansfield, then an unknown writer, poems by Thomas Eliot, and Kew Gardens by Virginia Woolf. The policy of the Hogarth Press was to publish the best and most original work that came to its attention, and the Wolves as publishers favored young and unknown writers. Virginia Woolf's home in Tavistock Square, Bloomsbury, became a literary and art center, attracting diverse intellectuals, artists, critics, and writers who became known as the Bloomsbury Group. Woolf was a significant figure in London literary society. Her most famous works include the novels Mrs. Dalloway, To the Lighthouse, and Orlando. On the 28th of March in 1941, Woolf committed suicide. She put on her overcoat, filled its pockets with stones, then walked into the river near her home and drowned herself. Cultural and Historical Context In or about December 1910, human nature changed, declared Virginia Woolf. Through this interesting hyperbole, she meant that there is a frightening discontinuity between the traditional past and the shaken present, that the line of history has been bent, perhaps broken. Modernist literature goes on the tacit assumption that human nature has indeed changed, Stephen Spender remarks, that the circumstances under which we live, forever being transformed by nature, have been so radically altered that people feel human nature to have changed and thereby behave as though it has. The consequences are extreme. A breakup of the traditional unity and continuity of Western culture, so that the decorums of its past no longer count for very much in determining its present, and the loosening of those ties that in one or another way is bounded to the institutions of society over the centuries. The writer takes upon himself the enormous ambition not to remake the world, uh, by now seen as hopelessly recalcitrant and alien, but to reinvent the terms of reality. 
modernist writers were in search of new ways to relate the human experience, changed human character in an uncertain, vague, and hopeless time in history. That time was demoralized world and lost generation, as Gertrude Stein later put it. Changing times and changed human nature demanded different modes of expression. For Virginia Woolf, new mode of expression was stream of consciousness to convey what lies below the surface of a character's psyche. Uh, now, check your comprehension. What can you say about Isabella's life? Is the author satisfied with depicting only the established facts about Isabella's life? How does uh, the story end? What conclusions can you draw about Isabella at the end of the story? Uh, language and literature. Explain the use of the literary elements of a story. Plot character, point of view, identify symbols within the text, and evaluate an author's use of symbolism to convey ideas. Determine the author's style, identifying particular word choices and figurative language. Plot. In traditional stories, plot and character depend on each other. No plot or story can develop without characters, and characters are frequently, though not always, developed through plots. Can this same be said about Virginia Woolf's story? Is this story event-dominated and tight-plotted? Is Woolf more interested in character than in plot? Is Virginia Woolf's narrative a chain of events that develop in traditional plots? Can traditional storytelling techniques succeed in portraying inner awareness of the character. Since stream of consciousness literature focuses on psychic processes, mental and spiritual processes of a character, it cannot employ plot in the ordinary sense. If then the stream of consciousness writer cannot draw on the conventional use of plot, to provide a necessary unity. He must devise other methods, comments Robert Alfred.